my son Bobby, gosh, last Thursday, just a few days ago, had knee surgery. I guess he didn't want his mama to get one up on him because he tore his meniscus. You know, I tore my meniscus in each knee and I had to have surgery. And so Bobby does, Bobby's very, very physical. He does jujitsu and he tore his meniscus. And I mean, he did a good job. Uh, it was a nasty tear. Uh, and I know that because the doctor showed me he put a little T90 camera. He made two punctures in Bobby's knee and slipped in a teeny tiny camera in there to take pictures of his meniscus. And I mean, it was a torn up mess. But by the time Dr. Hoffman got through, it looked like a brand new meniscus. Um, so I'm so glad to say he's doing well, but he was he was under sedation and he would look up over at me and he'd kind of grin and uh, he'd try to smile. And all of a sudden he, he, he had that little smile on his face and he looked over at me and he said, uh, Mama, I think, I think I want some goulash. <laughs> so I said, okay, son, as soon as he got out of surgery and the doctor came to let us know that he was all right, I took off for the grocery store uh, because I was going to cook my baby some goulash. Well, Bobby said, Mama, you give me the recipe and I, it mine just doesn't taste like yours. So what am I doing wrong? And I said, well, son, that's, that's like another, you know, thing that I really don't measure. Right. You called me a couple of months back and you yes. said, Mama, I'm trying to make the goulash like you said. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not like yours. And do you remember what you told me? Yes, I do remember. Okay, well, let's relive it. I hey, said, Mama. Okay. I'm making your goulash and it just doesn't look like yours. It doesn't smell like yours. It's just not right. It this is not like your yours. goulash. You said... Tell me the first thing you've done, son. Okay, well, I browned my meat, and then I drained it. Wrong! Stop right there, <laughs> is what you said. <laughs> now, to make a good uh, goulash or a good meatball or a good spaghetti sauce, uh, a good pot of chili, I always use a mixture of meats. I don't ever just use ground beef. Uh, I'll do a ground beef, I'll do a ground chicken, I'll do a ground turkey, I'll do a ground um, Italian sausage, I'll do a ground pork, uh, I will do a, like a ground breakfast sausage. So I, do, I mix it up in all kind of ways and I'll usually choose three meats that I'm gonna use and more than likely it is going to be ground beef, ground chicken, and uh, possibly a ground um, Italian sausage. And sometimes I'll buy the link Italian sausage, and I'll take my scissors, and I'll snip it into bite-sized pieces. And I'll do it that way instead of using the ground. But if you look at the ingredients here, I mean, you've got a nice blend of meat. I see that you got a ground beef, you got a sausage, and maybe a chicken is what yeah, it looks like. Right, right. I got a, but, a chicken. And that's a mild Italian sausage that's out of the skin. Mm. I like the flavors of three different meats. Mm. And one of these meats is chicken, one is beef, and one is a mild Italian. Pork. Yeah. But you could use uh, a breakfast sausage, you know, you, that you buy in those one pound rolls, mm -hmm. or you could get your butcher to grind you up just like fresh pork mm -hmm. from their pork chops mm -hmm. or whatever. It always, uh, anything you do, I think whether you do burgers or you do meatloaf or whatever, it's good to use a blend of meat. Yes. That always just adds a little something to it. Um, so you wanna brown those off good and when they're almost done, you'll want to throw in a whole sweet Vidalia onion. If Vidalias are not in season, then you can use a Texas sweet. And you'll want to start with a big onion. And you need to mince up about three fat cloves of garlic. And you'll want to toss that onion and uh, that garlic in with your ground beef. 
The space that you live in really affects the way you feel. So my first recommendation is start by updating your window treatments with Smith & Noble. Smith & Noble's beautiful handcrafted blinds, drapes, shades, and shutters are custom made just for you, and they offer different service options to fit your needs. To get started today, contact Smith & Noble to get my special limited time offer, 25% off on your window treatments, plus free design consultation. Create a space that you're going to love. For details about my special offer, go to smithandnoble.com slash Paula. That's smithandnoble.com slash Paula. Or call 1-800-659-3300. That's 1-800-659-3300. At this time, you would probably say to yourself, Self, I need to drain that fat off of this meat. But I'm telling you, don't do it (laughs) because that's where all your flavor is. Uh, I know when I asked Bobby to walk through everything he had done with his goulash, the very first step was I cooked and drained my meat. I said, well, stop right there. Drain it because that's where all your flavor is, son. So uh, at this time, I I like to add uh, a bouquet of like, I go out to my herb garden, I'll get uh, thyme and rosemary and flat leaf parsley, you know, and whatever I had, and I'll tie them up with my cooking twine, and I'll throw that over, and then I'm going to add two to three bay leaves, depending on how big they are. So I made us a little bouquet of the rosemary, uh, basil, and oregano. Beautiful. And like I said, because I don't have time. So what are you going to do? you just going to toss that in like that? Yeah. I'm going to toss this in and let really? that cook. Yes. And then I'm going to add... Into the meter once the sauce is added. Right there. Really? Yeah. And then I'll this take it out. This is not at all the way that I make it. Right? Well, you know what? There's probably This recipe is probably not in any of my cookbooks because I never do the same thing twice. And like I said, because I don't have time... I'm going to add some extra Italian seasoning because remember, Bobby, that uh, I know you remember. Heck, I'm going to put it on. (laughs) And then I'm going to add um, large, the largest can, a 28-ounce can of uh, crushed tomatoes. Now, this is very, very important. Uh, You can get diced. You can get whole peel tomatoes. You can get crushed. You can get tomato puree, but the crushed tomato is just perfect for this goulash because it's, there's no big chunks of tomato. It's um, it's blended right before it becomes like a just a tomato juice, and that's my favorite because I'm not crazy about big chunks of tomatoes uh, in my goulash that I can't ever get to cook down. So crushed tomatoes. And then you might put in a 15-ounce can of tomato sauce. But you know what makes it so good? Um, I am in love with a product that Rayo's Restaurant puts out. You know, Rayo's from New York City. Well, you can now buy their sauces at the grocery store. And they come in jars. And they're maybe a dollar or two more than the other brands, but y'all, it is so worth it. All right, so the rest is kind of, you know, really up to you as to what seasonings you like. Uh, We've got our little bouquet of fresh herbs in there, and uh, I'll add about a teaspoon to a tablespoon of red pepper flakes. And, you know, those red pepper flakes are hot, so put that in according to your... um, ability to eat hot and naturally salt and pepper or you know our house our house um seasoning mix which is salt pepper garlic and onion powder and we're going to stir these uh ingredients and let them cook for a while now i use an elbow macaroni just like i would for macaroni and cheese that same size and everything of macaroni noodles. Um, 
Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. You can cook your noodles in with your sauce while it's cooking, or you can cook your noodles in a separate pot of boiling water, drain them, and then add them to your sauce. And I'll, I'll do it, you know, different ways. Sometimes I'll cook it. The other day when I cooked it, I cooked it in the, in the, um, uh, sauce while it was cooking but I really I, I really think I like it cooked on the side I'll take like two cups of elbow macaroni and boil them in boiling water until they're soft and then drain them real good and stir them into my my red sauce now that is a goulash this, pot this is yes. my favorite pot in the whole world that you is think I ought to switch beautiful. it beautiful yes all right Bobby don't you worry son I so got just you. like that right no, 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 you got to pour it in, <laughs> goofy. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope I've helped y'all clarify everything and the steps that I do, uh, because I think my goulash is real, real good. Oh, and even though I've got the bouquet of thyme, rosemary, and parsley, uh, I always add about a tablespoon of Italian seasoning. To this because to me goulash is italiano <laughs> that ain't a good impression is it <laughs> so y'all enjoy it's really good a homemade hamburger helper <laughs> the space that you live in really affects the way you feel so my first recommendation is start by updating your window treatments with Smith & Noble. Smith & Noble's beautiful handcrafted blinds, drapes, shades, and shutters are custom made just for you, and they offer different service options to fit your needs. To get started today, contact Smith & Noble to get my special limited time offer, 25% off on your window treatments, plus free design consultation. Create a space that you're gonna love. For details about my special offer, go to smithandnoble.com slash Paula. That's smithandnoble.com slash Paula. Or call 1-800-659-3300. That's 1-800-659-3300.